Good morning. It's actually really a good morning. It's Good Friday. It is Good Friday. So it is a good morning indeed. Thank you for joining me today. Hey, today is our last day in our series, Courageous Women of Faith. And this is our last day talking about Mary Magdalene. And this is the last day for this video devotional for a while. And I want to tell you more about that at the end of today's story. So you want to stay to the very end today. Um, I want to share some things from my heart with you. But um, before we go there, we're going to be talking again about Mary Magdalene. And this is a beautiful preparation of our heart to worship Jesus this Easter. Now, you remember where we left off yesterday. Mary saw that the tomb was empty and she was looking for the body of Jesus and then she turns around, she sees a man she thinks is the gardener until he speaks her name. As soon as he said, Mary, she recognized that it was her Lord. Just a beautiful, beautiful moment. And as we look at um, John chapter 20, verse 16, John tells us, she turned and she said to him in Aramaic, Rabbani, which means teacher. Matthew 28, 9 reveals that Mary then fell to the ground and she took hold of his feet as an act of worship. I wonder in that moment if she didn't see the scars from the nails that pounded his feet into the cross. You know, what kind of savior bears the scars of human sin on his own body? And Mary, she worshiped him. You know, now that she had found him, she did not want to let go of this precious moment of worshiping the resurrected Lord. Jesus gave Mary Magdalene the amazing honor of being the very first human being to see him and to hear his voice after his resurrection. Others had heard the good news about the angels at the tomb, but Mary heard it from the very lips of Jesus. Mark chapter 16, verse 9 affirmed this. Now when he rose early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, from whom he had cast out seven demons. Now I'm sure that Mary would have remained at the feet of Jesus all day. I know I would have remained there all day. But Jesus had a very special assignment for her. In verse 17, Jesus said to her, Do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to the brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. So Mary was given a mission. She was to go and tell the disciples the good news that Jesus had resurrected from the dead and soon he's going to be ascending to heaven. He is Lord. We have to appreciate this moment for just a minute. He is Lord and he has appeared first to Mary. Mary Magdalene. I mean, a woman in her culture would never be a credible witness to, in the courts of law. Remember, women, if they went into a court of law to give a testimony, their testimony was considered worthless simply because they were a woman. So she is being given the privilege of being a credible witness in a culture that would have deemed her words pointless, worthless. You know, it. it and yet she is being given the privilege of being the first eyewitness to the resurrection and the first bearer of the good news of the gospel. Jesus is alive. He has risen from the dead. Now, verse 18 says, Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord and that he said these things to her. This is where we get the answer to our question. Why am I here? I'm here to love others by sharing the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm here to love others. And how do we love people? We tell them the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Our greatest expression of love for another person is to tell them the good news about Jesus. This is why Jesus gave his disciples the Great Commission in Matthew 28 verses 18 through 20. Imagine how they would have received his words on the heels of discovering that he was not dead. You know, he had risen from the tomb, and now there really was a message of good news to be proclaimed to all the nations. Now they understood, yes, of course, this good news needs to be shared. Matthew 28, 18 through 20 says, Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, make disciples of all nations, 
baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Jesus spoke those words. So how can we love God like Mary? How do we love God like Mary? Well, with Easter just two days away now, it's a great time to, to if you don't have a Bible teaching church, find a good Bible-centered church and walk through the doors, show up, be present, make friends, be in community, learn, grow, and worship. This is a, we can, yes, of course, tune in to online services. We can listen to worship music at home, but there is something of, of, of deep spiritual value being in community with other people, worshiping God, learning the truth of His Word, and building deep, lasting friendships in the body of Christ. So if you don't have a church, I want to encourage you to find a church this Easter. Show up, turn up, and, and plant yourself and call it home. Also, starting right now, we can begin by worshiping God in spirit and truth. We can do that by thanking Him for who He's made us to be, for praising Him for who He is. You know, we are God's beloved. What an what a amazing thing to praise Him for, that we've been freed from the penalty of sin and death because of the cross. We are now able to resist temptation. We, can, we have the power to break strongholds. We can live in the freedom and power of new life. You and I are new creations in Christ if we receive Christ as our Savior, and that means we are transformed. We are not what, what we once were, and we're not what we once we will be one day, but we are changed. How can we love others like Mary? Well, we can share the good news with someone. We can tell someone the story of our own changed identity. You know, Mary's story is this is who she was, and then she met Jesus, and now this is who she is. We have stories like that too. This is who I was, then I met Jesus, and now this is who I am. A powerful story of transformation. We can share the good news with people that Jesus is alive. He is with us until the end of the age. There is resurrection power available for living life in this broken world. We have a purpose. We have to go and be witnesses of this truth and let people who are bound in sin and darkness know that Jesus is alive, He loves us, and this is such great news. And boy, what a difficult year we've had. We are surrounded by people who are despairing with all of the trouble that we've experienced this year. They need good news, and you are the bearer of that good news in someone's life. And then we can tell about, um, we can pray that God will just show us who, where should we go and who shall we, we talk to and how shall we share this good news with someone. It's a great opportunity and I think there are people all around us today who just need us to, dip, to be bold, um, to speak out and to share this treasure of the knowledge of Jesus that we have with someone who desperately needs Him. I want to pray about that today, and then I'm going to come back and talk to you a little bit about um, some things going on in my life. So, will you pray with me? Father, thank you so much um, for this good news. This is good news. Have we forgotten what good news this is? Have we taken it for granted? Lord, this has been such a challenging year. I know there are people all around us who are despairing. They're tired. They're isolated. They're lonely. They're frustrated. They're angry. But the good news of who you are can triumph over all of those feelings and thoughts and experiences. So would you show us who is ready to hear about you? And oh, Lord, please may each person listening today find a place to worship on Easter morning. Find a place to express glory and adoration to you for who you are and for who you've made us to be, your beloved in Christ. And so thank you, Lord. Thank you for this time and this devotional. Thank you for these friends who have journeyed with me this last year. Thank you for all the ways you've encouraged our hearts as we've stayed steady and strong in your word. What a gift you have been to us this year. And we praise you and we thank you and we love you. We say this in the power of Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, it's been so amazing to be with you this last year. You know, it was on March 22nd, 2020, uh, just a year and a week ago, when the pandemic um, first required that people go under stay-at-home orders. 
and we weren't able to leave our homes and go to work and I actually received that news with great joy because I was tired, I was very exhausted by my role in ministry and also as a doctorate student and I was falling behind in my schoolwork. So I received this news with great joy and I went out and I sat out on my patio, I think it was a sunny day. And I opened up my school books, just praising God for time. I thought it was going to be two weeks, right? I praised him for time to study, to catch up on my studies, to get ready for my cohort in May. And he tapped me on the shoulder and he said, I want you to go and do a devotional for your women. They, I want you to go and and to connect, to be available to them every day. And I was like, "Ah, no. No, no, no. No, this is my time. This is my time. I can catch up on my studies. I have this window of free time that's been two whole weeks. And it was like, no, I want you to go and I want you to to keep your women strong and steady during this storm. And I resisted maybe another second and I tried to read and I couldn't concentrate. And I, I got up out of my chair. I plopped down in this chair. I put up my iPhone and I just started talking about, well, here we are, and we're gonna we're gonna meet together, and we're gonna open God's word together, and we're gonna stay um, together in His word during this this unusual season that we thought was only gonna be two weeks long. So I didn't know how long it was gonna be. I just know it was compelling that God was calling me to meet with you. And if you go back and watch the early videos, it was very unplanned and very relaxed and, you know, I didn't really know what I was doing, even how to use the technology. Um, But God had a plan and uh, now it's been a year that we've been doing this together. Um, Eventually the channel was called Mornings with Marianne. Um, The first 40 episodes, season one, I called it, we uh, looked at the character of God and each day we lifted our eyes up to look at God instead of looking at our circumstances and we reminded ourselves about his amazing qualities his character his faithfulness his trustworthiness and as we the pandemic was unfolding it was so incredible to just lift our eyes up and see God in all his glory for who he is and then over the summer um, we spent um, a lot of days um, 55 days I think it was Um, talking about the life of Jesus. And so we went back to the beginning of the prophecies about his birth in the Old Testament, all the way to his birth and the accounts of his life in the gospel, all the way to his death, resurrection, ascension, and second coming in the book of Revelation. It was just so rich to think about Jesus and to be reminded of our Savior in the midst of this pandemic unfolding and the racial issues that became charged and all the things that were happening we held really steady by taking our eyes off of our circumstances and putting them on the the beautiful person of Jesus Christ. Then in the fall, we got ready to launch the river study in the life of David, and God just gave me this, uh, excuse me, we got ready to launch the river study in the Psalms, and God gave me the idea to uh, walk through the life of David through 1 and 2 Samuel. And that was incredible. 71 episodes we spent in season three talking about David and his life, his calling. Um, and it was just beautiful to do that And in the background as in the river study, uh, we were doing the Psalms and so many of the Psalms were written by David. And sometimes the circumstances of David's life lined up perfectly with the psalm that he was writing in that moment. That was incredible. Called that series, Living by Faith in a Fractured World. And um, that was so rich to look at the life of David. And then I thought possibly we were done. Of course, we did take a break in there for Christmas and we did contemplating Christmas and got our hearts ready for the celebration of Christmas. I thought that maybe we were done. And then God gave me the idea for Courageous Women of Faith. And um, we've looked at at Ruth and Deborah and Esther and now Mary. And what's been really interesting about this series, series number four, um, is that I was really having to live as a courageous woman in the midst of talking about courageous women because some recent changes in my church about women being able to preach have put me in the spotlight and have made me somewhat of a lightning rod on an issue. 
that has created a lot of division. So it's been a really hard season, but God in his providence has just beautifully called us to talk about courageous women of faith and uh, for me to actually live into that as we were going through this, this hard thing. So he is so good. He's so purposeful. And though I show up each morning to, to be with you in his word, he meets us by having us in a place in his word that is exactly what we need to hear. He has truly been speaking to us through these times together. And I know that so many of you have expressed your gratitude. And so um, I, don't, I don't want to leave you unsupported. I hope that you don't feel like I'm stepping away from you because I want to. Um, but I'm, I'm at a point now where I do need to step away and complete my doctoral studies. Um, so um, we've, uh, in these four seasons, there are 200 episodes online. You can go back and listen to them again if you'd like. Um, but uh, now I have six months to finish my doctoral work. Uh, I'm doing a doctorate in spirit, spiritual formation with Gordon Conwell. and. Um, and I, I need to, to do my homework now. <laughs> and I feel that now the Lord has released me to do my homework, to write my thesis project, and my hope is to get done by the end of summer. And then I'm going to be available and open for the Lord to lead me back to meet with you again, if that's what he chooses to do. It's, it's his thing. So I'm just going to trust him. And, uh, and if you would like me to come back and do these morning devotionals in the fall, uh, pray, ask him to lead me back because I will listen to him and I will come back again. I've got so many things that we could talk about, so many books of the Bible, so many characters. And so I would love to come back just as a matter of what he's calling me to do. Um, but I just want to say thank you for being with me in this journey. Thank you for the encouragement and the testimonies of how this time has ministered to you. And um, you can reach me anytime you want. Uh, Marianne at riverwest.org. You're welcome to email me. Um, you're welcome to find me at Riverwest Church in Oregon. And also, you're welcome to join me on the River, the River's name of our Bible study, the River YouTube channel, where I'll still be continuing to teach the Psalms until the middle of May. So I just want to say thank you. I hope you have a very, very blessed Easter. I love you all. Have a wonderful day.